Welcome back to Google headquarters here in Mountain View for another episode of Measure Matters. I'm Lewis Gray. And I'm Krista Seiden. And today we're gonna to talk about the whole year worth of Measure Matters content. Mm -hmm. Really we have 12 episodes that we've gone over in the last several months to cover all pieces of our analytics suite, including Data Studio, Optimize, Google Tag Manager, Firebase, and really anything that you can measure that comes from Google has flown through this studio. And of course, Google Analytics. Absolutely, Google Analytics. And if we look at our agenda today, we're gonna to talk about what's new in our entire platform, go through the word on the street, which is really where we hear from you in this pieces that you've been writing about our content, and then go take a deep dive into the last year worth of content. So when I start with what's new, what we've introduced are some brand new connectors from the Google Marketing Platform. So you can connect the Google Marketing Platform properties, including Display and Video 360, Search Ads 360, and Google Ads, to your Data Studio reports. And we also have a brand new template so you can track your campaign results with Google Advertising Performance. So get started with that today. And sticking with Data Studio, we've had a lot of people asking for the ability to embed external sources directly into reports. So now you can embed YouTube videos, Google Docs, and pages from the web and have them right inside your Data Studio reports. And what I found really interesting is you can interact with those sites even though they're in a frame inside Data Studio. So it's just like any other web page, only in a box. Pretty cool. We also have something I was excited to see. This came from our webmaster team, which is a brand new site kit for WordPress. Mm -hmm. And so what Site Kit by Google is, is a new WordPress plugin which comes with pre-installed connectors to Google Analytics, Search Console, AdSense, and PageSpeed Insights. And for those of you who are watching this program, you already probably are using at least four of those. So what's interesting is it lets you have all this content right in one place. You can manage, measure, and compare to your peers uh, all in one spot. And so you should sign up to be an early tester of this plugin today if you're on the WordPress platform. And finally in the what's new section is Kaggle integration with Data Studio. If you're familiar with Kaggle, there are 10,000 public data sets, uh, which you can now access using the public API and directly pull that into Data Studio. And you can analyze these data sets in Kaggle and then visualize their findings right in the Data Studio product. You know, this came out uh, earlier this week, I think Manaz Kazi was working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very exciting to see what people can visualize. And I, I saw people on Twitter just getting excited and saying what kind of weekend they were gonna spend just importing data into reports. And I can't think of a better way to spend a weekend. <laughs> Uh, yeah, actually, Manaz stopped me in the hallway um, earlier this week and was just so excited about this launch, um, and I can see why. It's definitely um, a really nice addition to Data Studio, and we hope that you guys all enjoy your weekends full Absolutely. of Kaggle and Data Studio. And what we've been saying for a long time is your reports are only as good as the data you put into it. And if you have a data plan, obviously you can visualize that all the way through. And this is exactly the good type of marriage where you have the good data store reports, the whole framework there, and now you have really amazing content to pull through. So real quick, a couple updates on Word on the Street. Uh, you know, every single day we take a look at our platforms and see what you're writing about the analytics suite. And there are a couple of things I want to highlight. Uh, first came from Antonio Villegas from Nelio Soft, who said, you know, Google Analytics kind of gets this focus on statistics and being able to get specific data about your site, but it's fun. And we're here joking about what you're going to spend your weekend doing or might actually be doing, mm -hmm. but he has a lot of fun taking a look and understanding more about your website and those visitors that you can deep dive into demographic data, including countries of origin, language spoken, and what people were searching for when they got to your site. Uh, so it's just a quick report and reminder that you can do a lot more than just the basics with GA. And also uh, audience performance. You know, when you take a look at multiple channels that come into your site, both paid and free, you get a real deep insight into where the most valuable audience is that comes to your site, because not all visitors are equal. So I was happy to see Amy Bishop did a piece for Search Engine Journal as a contributor and really took a deep dive in the audience report that I think came out earlier this year in Google Analytics and helped you find out the right, right amount of performance from your audience here. I feel a little bit bad for that stick figure. <laughs> It's, it's not actually damaging the stick figure. It's a two-dimensional object, Krista. Okay. So this brings us to our 2018 highlights recap. You know, for the last six months or so, we've been doing events every couple of weeks mm -hmm. here on Measure Matters, and you probably haven't seen all of them. So we're going to talk about why you should and what you should be doing through the new year. Yep. So it's going to be a rapid-fire recap of all 12 episodes that we've had to date. 
So first up, episode one was all about machine learning. And not just machine learning, but uh, Lewis and I tackled the question of, are robots going to take over our jobs? Are we going to have jobs in five years? I think we came out with an answer of, no, they're not quite taking over our jobs yet. Um, but it's definitely becoming much more embedded in everything that we do. Um, machine learning and artificial intelligence are built into so many different efforts, not just across Google, but across so many other platforms out there. Um, and analytics intelligence is awesome. So analytics intelligence is our insights tool within Google Analytics where you can actually see a lot of this ML and AI work on our side come to fruition to give you uh, real answers to real questions that you might have in natural language or via anomalies. Um, and in so many more ways, we're super excited about that roadmap. Um, so you should check it out. And I think what we came to the conclusion was they're not taking our jobs yet, but what they are doing is removing the repetitive tasks that for so long we've had to do by hand. So I, for one, welcome them. All right, episode two, all about measurement for growth. Now, this has actually been my personal mantra this year. I've spoken at um, probably dozens of conferences uh, pushing this theme, and it's all about uh, talking about what is growth marketing, how does that relate to what we all know in terms of digital marketing and digital analytics or optimization, what are some of the strategies that we want to pay attention to when it comes to that? Um, and then what are some of the metrics that are super important? We talked about a North Star metric and having one place for all of your different uh, key functions within the team to be able to point to and say that is what we are driving in our organization. And finally, we talked about the AAA growth framework, which is all about acquisition, activation, and adoption. And throughout the episode, I talk about several different metrics and tactics to be able to really t uh, tackle each of those different pieces of that framework. And ever since this episode, I see the North Star framework everywhere. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just one of those things that when you talk about it and you think about it, you run into it all the time. Yep. I've seen people here at Google use it and say, what is our North Star that we're driving to? And it brings me back to this episode. Probably my favorite line, uh, though, is that you shouldn't call it growth hacking. Absolutely not. <laughs> Don't prefer that term. Growth marketing or growth. All right, moving on. Episode three, Google Analytics for Firebase. Now, this is where we took a look at what is our mobile app analytics solution here at Google, and that's Google Analytics for Firebase. We gave you an overview of the product. We talked a lot about some of the new features that we've launched this year. And I went into detail about the event and parameter model and how that compares to what you may be familiar with in the classic GA model or the old GA SDK for mobile apps, um, and how to think about that in terms of implementation and best practices around doing that and migration even. Um, we also launched a Getting Started series uh, for Google Analytics for Firebase. You can find that on our YouTube playlists. Uh, so you can get a lot more information on Google Analytics for Firebase in general via that series, but definitely check out this episode to get a nice holistic overview of what we're talking about. And this has been incredibly important in 2018 as we plan for 2019. The world of apps is really taking over. You know, I've heard people say that you can use apps on your phone for about 90% of the activity on your phone. And so as app developers and app users, you know, being able to get the right amount of content to measure and understand the whole journey that continues within the app once you're off the website mm -hmm. is a game changer. And so I really appreciated having Firebase available uh, for people to get that right. Yep. And if you haven't played with it yet, there's a great demo account to check out on the Firebase website um, so that you can get hands on with Google Analytics for Firebase yourselves. All right, so moving on. I think episode four probably had the best rhyming title of any of our presentations. I do and that's, really like this title. That's Hearts, Charts, and Shopping Carts. It's fun to say, but it's better to actually do. And what this really takes to heart, I did it again, uh, is really how you combine marketing data with emotion. For the longest time, marketing people have said, you know, we're just going to make the customer feel good. How's our customer satisfaction? You know, this is the right visual for us. But the reality is that we have data to measure your results. Mm -hmm. And so we can better analyze and count the right type of activities that take place throughout your campaigns and really try to help you understand the full customer journey like we just talked about with apps. Mm -hmm. You know, when do they come to your website? How often do they engage? And where is mobile playing a role? Mobile has been a delightfully transformative action in the world of web. And how do you really take that on when people are investigating and investing in your site at little micro moments multiple times throughout the day. Delightfully transformative. I'm going to use that. Feel free. 
All right, episode five. We talked about Google Marketing Live, which is our annual uh, large conference for marketers, uh, as well as our new Salesforce integrations. So uh, the big update coming out of Google Marketing Live was that we rebranded. So you've probably heard this much more throughout the end of this year, but we are now the Google Marketing Platform um, and have moved away from a lot of the naming around the GA360 suite and some of the individual ads products to make a much more holistic uh, platform for marketers across both measurement and activation uh, through ads and double click, uh, uh, sorry, DV360 mm -hmm. <laughs> and search ad 360, still getting used to the new names. Um, and then on the Salesforce front, we walked through the two integrations that we have launched this year. So the first is the Sales Cloud integration, and that is looking at events coming from Salesforce for offline lead status changes that you can then collect and action on within Google Analytics even going as far as creating audiences to remarket to from people who have fallen out of your funnel offline. Really, really cool um, to put into practice. And then finally, we have the Marketing Cloud integration, which looks uh, twofold at getting Google Analytics data into your Google, uh, sorry, Salesforce Marketing Cloud dashboard, as well as uh, sharing audiences between Google Analytics 360 and Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So also really great, uh, really great action that you can take off of that data to really be able to grow your businesses. I think it's incredible to remember that we started this before the Google Marketing Platform came out. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I did think you did focus on is that this is more than just a rebrand. This is a real holistic understanding of the entire customer journey, even as they flow through the Google properties. Yep. You know, not only measuring the, the campaigns that they're doing, but starting new ones and getting that whole process through. All right, episode six, optimization best practices. So we talked about optimization versus personalization and how we can optimize a lot of things, but we're moving in this journey to be able to provide a much more personal experience for our users. Um, and I walked through the optimization maturity model, which looks at how you can use optimization and personalization best practices and the tool sets that you already have to be able to really start to mold and personalize that experience first at mass scale and then getting more specific with specialization, more specific to the referral source, and finally specific down to the actions that people are actually taking on your website. A lot of really kind of practitioner tips coming at you in this episode of how to do a lot of this in practice. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. Yeah, I like this went beyond A-B testing. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people simplify it down to just A-B testing, but the, the demonstrations that you gave really brought it home in terms of the flexibility that you could do in personalization. Oh, thank you. So here we are with Data Studio. We've talked about Data Studio, I think, every single week. Yes. You know, Data Studio, obviously our, our gung-ho visualization platform. We've had new announcements every single week in terms of connections and visualizations. There's a lot going on. And so we were excited to take episode seven and really focus on that and bring you up to date in terms of why we built Data Studio and brought it to market and really get that first taste of what people were doing with their creativity, yep. which we'll touch on in a few more episodes. Uh, most definitely. And we actually had a guest uh, a mm -hmm. guest, a host with us for this one too. It was Mary Pishney, who is one of our product managers on Data Studio. She walked us through a demo of a lot of the new things that they've launched, um, talked through a lot of these different functionality that you see listed on the screen. But as Lewis said, I think the um, kind of uh, resounding uh, thing that I've heard throughout all of our episodes has been how fast Data Studio has been launching and iterating and building really cool new features for right. all of our users. And I think we, we talked a lot about data blending at that point as well. That was when it was brand new. Uh, and since then, you know, it's been a couple of months. We've seen people do really creative work with being able to take in multiple sources mm -hmm. and produce a single report that combines these disparate sources. It's really interesting. Yep. So... Bringing us to episode eight, you know, we thought we'd take a little bit of a different approach and focus on a specific vertical with public relations. Now, in my long life in history, I've spent a lot of time working with public relations, whether it's working with an agency, actually pitching press, or being pitched myself when I wrote as a tech blogger. And one of the things that was really fundamental was understanding that public relations can be measured. And we're not talking just the number of hours that you use your account manager, but in the actual results. And so the way that you can measure that is through data because data determines the decisions and analytics get you closer to those users. 
and then you can actually get to the next level and create brand new stories with data. I think that's really the most exciting piece about this specific episode is understanding you can't just send a press release out and hope that it hits everybody, but you can build a story and make it easier for journalists who have less time than ever to create their stories, but do so with charts and graphs and make it uniquely interesting so it stands out. And this is one of the best memes that I think we've had in our presentations. <laughs> it is. We don't really do a lot of memes because kids these days. <laughs> but you know, this is one that's just important. It really kind of goes back to, I used to do it this way, now I have better options. Yep. All right, episode nine was all about advanced analysis, which is a new uh, feature area within Google Analytics for our Google Analytics 360 customers. And it's essentially a Canvas-like workspace where you can go deep on analysis, and you can do that through three different techniques that we have. So the first is exploration, which is essentially a data table on steroids. You can slice and dice, add a ton of segments, break down any line, um, any row, any column that you want, you can create segments and create audiences from any different piece of information in that table. It's really flexible, really cool. Uh, we also have segment overlap, and this one kind of just blows my mind in terms of the actual analysis and the data that you can get out of it. You take segments that you already have, up to three of them, and overlay them to see where those overlaps are, and you can break it down or you can segment that data by whatever dimension you have, and then, and here's the really meta part, you can create a segment of an overlap and then apply that segment again um, in a new analysis. Uh, so I think it's a really, really cool um, technique to be able to go really deep in areas that are not possible anywhere else in Google Analytics. I think this was probably my favorite demo of the year. You know, just, I was telling you when we did this episode, I was almost jealous that I don't get to use this on a daily basis. You, know, you kind of want to go out, start your own company just so you can use the advanced analysis. So I thought that was very cool. And it's been fun to see other people discover the same pieces that you highlighted in this episode as they understand just really how strong this is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also talked a little bit about the funnels feature as well, which takes custom funnels in Analytics 360 um, and basically puts those on steroids as well. It's a much better funnels technique uh, for you to use and analyze with. Um, and we finished off with a great demo. So if you haven't checked this out, if you want to learn more about advanced analysis as a feature set, definitely watch this episode. So episode 10 was the only Measure Matters episode where Krista couldn't make it. I was happy to co-host with Breen Baker. Uh, Breen's a product manager on Google Analytics, and we took a deep dive into real-time analytics. I know that a lot of you have real-time analytics open all day. It, it kind of is the first clue that something's going very well with your site mm -hmm. or not. Yep. And so he really broke it down, helped us understand how fast this works, that really first-party content when it's right on your site those visitors show up in seconds within Google Analytics, and even third-party data, be it from Salesforce or BigQuery, mm -hmm. those are about 10 minutes old. And 10 minutes old is not bad. No, it's pretty uh, and Especially at the type of scale in which Google Analytics functions. It's really impressive how he got in there and under, how it put us understand how you can get real-time insights into your data as it happens. I also think it's really impressive that over 13 episodes, um, this being our 13th, that we were together on 12 of them, considering mm -hmm. both of our travel schedules. So I think that's an impressive feat well, as well. It's important for me to have you here, so we will make sure <laughs> that that happens. All right. Uh, episode 11 was all about Google Optimize. So in episode six, we talked about optimization best practices, but we didn't get too much into the actual uh, feature set or the product that you can use to do that. So episode 11 was all about that. We talked about optimization and personalization and a lot of the new personalization features that have been rolling out in Google Optimize. Um, we also looked at how you can make much more personal ads with the Google Ads integration with Optimize. Um, and we laid out an easy plan to get started. You can create your account, add your Optimize code snippet, optionally link to Google Ads, and then build your first experience. Um, and we also go into detail about how to actually build that experience. And I show you all of this in a demo of Google Optimize and actually setting this up. Um, we also have a getting started series on this one as well. So if you want to actually get really deep into Google Optimize and, and hands on and learn how to get started there, check out that series, which is a playlist on uh, our channel. 
channels as well, but check out this episode first because it's a great overview. And that is something you brought up a couple of times. You know, this is not the only video series in town. Mm -hmm. And so what I've been happy to see as we go through and discuss the latest and greatest with Google Analytics, we've often talked about new other video series, part of them with you in them or with Manaz focus on the developer advocacy side. Yep. But we're constantly trying to bring new content that helps you do a better job in your own measurement. And so youtube.com slash Google Analytics has a lot of good content in there. Yep. And uh, that brings us to episode 12, which we had just about four weeks ago. This was a lot of fun to put together because it was so community driven. You know, every couple of weeks we come in here and we talk about Data Studio, but so what? Uh, so what we're seeing is each of you has been able to really do things that we never anticipated with Data Studio. Mm -hmm. You know, the first step is that we created a gallery to highlight what we think are the most useful or most simply templated versions, which can help you with your marketing measurement, your advertising, your core analytics, of course, and very specific pieces to focus on e-commerce. But then some of you did things that we didn't expect. We saw measurements of gender imbalance in the House of Representatives. We saw specific BART schedules to help us get from place to place, which I know you like. Avocado uh, pricing. Avocado pricing, <laughs> Big Mac pricing. Um, we saw integrations that talked about Star Wars. You know, we, we just saw some really incredible things, including my personal favorite, which was the Major League Baseball season Teams <laughs> by wins, just pure barcode analysis where I can go in there and see exactly when the A's took off and were great in the second half. I really liked the hotel analysis and yeah. the hotel nights. Everything um, about travel. <laughs> yeah. It speaks to my nerdy side. So that was a lot of fun to do. And so it was exciting to mention a lot of your names on the air. Uh, for those of you who have created a lot of interesting reports, and I expect as we talk about 2019, do more measure ap measures episodes, uh, we'll see even more names and more integration that's more than just Chris and myself speaking, but working with each of you in the community. And that brings us to the end of 2018's Measure Matter show. So if you do want to connect with us, uh, you can always find us on pretty much any social platform we're talking about at hashtag Measure Matters. Obviously, we're always taking a look and updating our specific handles, be they Google Analytics, Krista Seiden, and Lewis Gray. Uh, you can always find us or tag us if you do have questions about Google Analytics, our entire suite. And if you missed any of these, which we obviously don't think you should have, uh, you can take a look at our playlist at tinyurl.com slash Measure Matters. Uh, thank you for all of you for engaging with Measure Matters in 2018. Yeah, thanks. It was a lot of fun. See you next year.